We physicists have waited a hundred years since 1916 for this photograph. It is a region black holes might just be one of the most fascinating and mysterious phenomena in the universe. They are massive beasts in terms of power, but at the same time virtually invisible to us. A black hole weighing perhaps two to four million times the mass of the sun, but because of the research that was put into them over the last couple of decades, we've gone from knowing absolutely nothing about them to getting to learn more and more up close and personal. While things have just gotten crazier, Michio Kaku just announced that we've finally gotten a look at what's inside a black hole, and this new information brings light to the details the world of science might have missed all along. Join us as we dig deeper into black holes and unveil what's inside space's big bad. Before we get into the details of what Michio Kaku found, we have to talk about the firsts. Even though most of us have some idea what black holes are, there are still some gaps in the right information. You see, in 1916, Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity, which predicted the existence of black holes. At that time, the concept of black holes was purely theoretical. It took another 50 years for the scientific community to find evidence that black holes actually exist. This happened in the 1960s. They were studying the Cygnus constellation when they noticed an oddly bright blue star that was emitting X-rays. This star wasn't a stagnant object, but was going around a giant black something. Upon further investigation, it was found that the X-rays weren't just moving around on their own, but were being sucked into the black thing they were orbiting, thus the name black hole. This discovery was significant because it provided proof that black holes actually exist and that they weren't just a figment of Albert Einstein's wild imagination. While that was great, it also meant that there was this unreal entity in space that we urgently needed to know more about. So, researchers all around the world got to work. This black hole was named Cygnus X1, and it is located in the constellation Cygnus, about 6,000 light years from Earth. It was no small discovery. It's about 14 times brighter than the Sun and incredibly dense, which causes it to have a strong gravitational pull. The gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape it. This is why it is called a black hole. The concept of a black hole is both fascinating and terrifying. It is a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. Anything that gets too close to a black hole will be pulled into it, never to be seen again. But that aspect of danger makes it even more necessary to learn everything there is to know about them. Was this it, or were we just beginning? The answer ended up being the latter. After the discovery of Cygnus X1, scientists started to search for other black holes. They found that there may be close to over 100 million black holes in the Milky Way alone, but because they are so incredibly hard to detect, we still don't have an exact number. Nevertheless, from the looks of it, there are several million black holes in the Milky Way, in our very galaxy, which is what makes them even more important to study. So, let's break it down. The main concern with black holes is always going to be gravity. Their gravitational pull is so intense that anything that enters it compresses down astronomically until it becomes a singularity. In simpler terms, black holes are like cosmic vacuum cleaners that suck everything in. One of the scariest parts about the research that's gone into black holes is the fact that if someone were to fall into one, they would get stretched to the point that they become a single line. This process would happen slowly, and the person would die before the final form actually sets in. So, let's just say that no one should be stepping into one, but they're all over, so could we really be in danger? Despite the fact that the closest black hole to Earth is 1,500 light-years away, it's still close enough to bring up questions and concerns. In 2021, scientists were able to release the first clear photograph of a black hole, specifically the M87 black hole. This black hole was photographed several nights in a row, and with each photograph, the researchers gathered more and more evidence about it. They had to stitch the individual photos together to create something that filled all the gaps. This way, they were able to figure out that there are three layers to a black hole. It's not just one single gaping hole of nothingness, as many people believe. Things are a lot more complicated than that. To even get to the nothingness part of a black hole, you have to make it through the first two layers. 
The first layer is called the event horizon. While in the first layer, it's the point of no return. Once you pass the event horizon, there's no turning back, and you will be sucked into the black hole. It only gets worse from there on out. The second layer is the photon sphere, which is the region where light orbits the black hole. Any light that enters this region will be trapped and will not be able to escape the black hole's gravitational pull. Finally, we come to the third layer, which is the singularity. This is where everything that enters the black hole gets compressed down astronomically until it becomes a singularity. The singularity is a point in space-time where the laws of physics as we know them break down, and we just can't predict what happens next. At the singularity, the density is infinite, and the laws of physics as we know them cease to exist. What makes all of this infinitely worse is the fact that every single black hole you study will be entirely different from the last. Sure, they do tend to follow the same three-layer concept, but the way they function could be vastly different. Now, if this were anything else, all we'd need to do is hop back on those telescopes and just study the problem at hand in detail, but with black holes, you can't really do that. Scientists can only study black holes indirectly by observing the radiation they emit and the gas and dust that surrounds them. Sending a probe like the Voyager inside a black hole is not possible because anything that enters the event horizon is pulled towards the singularity, where it is compressed to an infinitely small point. So, you can't exactly waste billions of dollars just to get a glimpse every time because the second the probe gets close enough, it'll just crush into nothingness. Because of that glaring problem, Scientists are left with no option but to study these objects in a two-dimensional way, even though they are three-dimensional phenomena in reality. To make matters even more challenging, there are also the two problems of every black hole being unique and the laws of physics as we know them breaking down when we try to explore the inside. This means that the traditional methods of scientific inquiry don't really apply to the study of black holes. That doesn't mean that the researchers haven't been busy. There are lots of different theories and explanations of black holes, and with each one, things get more and more interesting. In 1963, the New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr used Einstein's equations of gravity to provide the best description of a spinning black hole. Kerr showed that a spinning black hole wouldn't collapse into a point as previously thought, but into a ring of fire or a thin disk. The disk would be spinning so rapidly that centrifugal forces would keep it from collapsing. This spinning disk of matter is called the ergosphere, and it is the region surrounding the black hole where the laws of physics start to break down. But the most intriguing feature of Kerr's solution was that it predicted the existence of an Einstein-Rosen bridge, also known as a wormhole. This is a theoretical passage through space-time that connects two separate regions of the universe or even two parallel universes. The idea is that if one were to fall into a black hole, instead of being crushed to oblivion, one would be sucked down a tunnel through the ring of fire and shot out a white hole in a parallel universe. To understand how this works, we need to look at the concept of space-time. In Einstein's theory, space and time are not separate entities, but are interconnected, forming a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. Objects with mass warp this fabric, creating a gravitational field that causes other objects to move towards them. Now imagine a sheet of paper representing space-time. If you place two points on the paper and draw a line between them, this is a representation of how objects move through space-time. But what if you could fold the paper in half and create a shortcut between the two points? This is the basic idea behind. A wormhole. Kerr's solution suggested that black holes could be gateways to other parts of the universe or even to parallel universes. The idea of traveling through a wormhole is not just science fiction. It has been taken seriously by scientists for decades. While the existence of wormholes has not been proven, it is theoretically possible based on the equations of general relativity. If we could harness the power of a black hole and create a stable wormhole, it would revolutionize space travel. We could travel to distant galaxies in a matter of minutes instead of millions of years. We could even travel to parallel universes and explore new dimensions of reality. But there are many challenges to overcome before this becomes a reality. One of the biggest challenges is the stability of the wormhole. In theory, a wormhole could collapse as soon as it is created, crushing anything that tries to pass through it. 
To keep a wormhole open, we would need a form of exotic matter with negative energy density. This type of matter has been proposed in theory, but has never been observed in practice. Another challenge is the immense gravitational forces near the black hole. The gravitational pull is so strong that it would crush anything that tries to enter the wormhole. To survive this journey, we would need a spacecraft that can withstand these forces and a way to protect the occupants from the extreme conditions. Despite these challenges, scientists are making progress in understanding the nature of black holes and the possibility of wormholes. Advances in technology and new discoveries in physics are bringing us closer to unlocking the secrets of these cosmic phenomena. But the theory isn't where things ended. A few years ago, researchers discovered something that completely changed the game. They found that black holes don't just emit radiation, but also gravitational waves. These waves are ripples in space-time caused by the acceleration of massive objects, such as black holes. In 2015, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, detected gravitational waves for the first time. This discovery provided direct evidence of the existence of black holes and opened a new window into the universe. Gravitational waves are like echoes of cosmic events, allowing us to study the most violent and energetic processes in the universe. They carry information about the nature of black holes, their formation, and their interactions with other objects. By studying these waves, scientists hope to unravel the mysteries of black holes and gain a deeper understanding of the fundamental laws of physics. One of the most exciting prospects is the possibility of using gravitational waves to detect primordial black holes. These are black holes that formed in the early universe, shortly after the Big Bang. Primordial black holes could provide valuable insights into the conditions of the early universe and the formation of galaxies. But there's more. In recent years, scientists have also made significant progress in simulating black holes. These simulations allow us to visualize the complex dynamics of black holes.